Is this the end of the world and you know it? Let's find out. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? In this video, I'm going to show you the in-painting function of Stable Diffusion with the settings. This video is at the same time a warning about the nefarious ways this could be used, but also a love letter to Stable Diffusion for the artistic value and merit this technique can have. So we're going to look at both sides. First, we want to look at a face replacement, also known as deep fake. Now, this is one of the ways it can be used, and this is kind of worrisome, especially in how good stable diffusion does it. But I also want to point out that the photo I selected here is physically not equal to the face of the star that I'm putting on that body. So you will see the difference. It's not 100% the same, but this is not the attempt of this video. So first of all, this is how in painting works. For this, I'm using the Stable Diffusion Local Install Automatic 1111. So here we are in the Image to Image tab. Here we are in the in painting tab. You drag the image in. And here you have a brush icon. Now we can roughly paint over the face like so, but make sure that you're not touching the finger here on the side because that might be problematic when creating that in paint. As a general rule of thumb, it is better that nothing is obstructing the area that you want to replace. Otherwise, you might have problematic results. You can also go back here with this back button and then try to paint the mask again if the mask didn't work on your first attempt. So we paint over this, but you see we are also going over the edges of the face because these other parts are going to be replaced too. Now let's scroll down here. We have here a mask blur. Four is okay for that. Then we want to in-paint the mask. So the masked area is going to be replaced this will replace everything but the mask area. So you can also choose that if you want to. You can also upload a mask if you want to that you have created in your photo software. This can be more precise, but often I find that this rough selection actually works pretty well. Now, what you want to have here for the mask content is original. What this means is that the AI is looking at the original photo and then replacing that original part with a counterpart that is fake. When you have fill, it will come up with a completely new content regardless of what is below that. But often this just gives you a blurry smudge and latent noise and latent nothing will exactly do that. It will bring noise or nothing. So that's not helpful. The next thing here is very important. It's called in paint at full resolution. What this means is this will use the resolution you set down here. So this resolution in no way has to be the same ratio as the image. Actually, it is better. It has the same ratio as the area you want to in paint. For our reason here, it is good enough to have something that is square. I set it a little bit bigger than the original resolution because a higher resolution often helps you to get better results, but a too high resolution will actually give you worse results. Now here we have a slider that says in paint at full resolution padding pixels. And when you set this up to around 90, I found that this gives much better result for the content of that in paint. Another thing to play around with is the sampling method. Usually I found that for in painting, the Euler A, which stands for ancestral, works the best with a setting of 30. Don't go too low or too high or you get strange results. And Euler A doesn't improve over 40 steps. If you don't get good results from that, as a second solution, I would suggest to use DDIM with 70 sampling steps. If you do face replacement, what you want to do is to also make a hook here to restore faces. Now for this, we have an additional setting. Let's go up here to settings and then go down here to face restoration. You can choose here between different methods and you can choose here for the strength of the code former face restoration. I chose code former. You can experiment with the other settings. None, of course, doesn't do anything. And I found that code former 0.5 works pretty well because you don't want it to be too strong, but also not to be too weak. Let's go here to the next settings. You can set up a batch size, but I found that you get better results when you individually start these renders. The CFG scale is pretty important. 
This means how strongly the AI will stick to your prompt. If the value is very low, the AI will just do random things. And if it's too high, it will do very strange things. So I found that the best value for in painting is between six and 15. You have to play around with that to see what kind of result you're getting. The denoise strength down here means how close it should be to the original image. If you move it down here to zero, nothing will change at all. If you move it to one, the AI image will have nothing to do with the image. So I found that for in painting, the best range is between 0 0.5 and 0 0.75. 0 0.75 is already pretty high and will give you some artistic freedom from the AI, some variation to the original photo. So you have to play around with that. You can leave the seat at minus one, which will create a random seat. It's important that in the prompt, you only write what you want to change. In this case, I wrote Jennifer Lawrence looking at camera. Let's click on generate and you can see when the process is starting, this is actually rendering a square image with only the face in it and some of the surrounding. And when this has finished, this render will be combined with the original photo. Now to make that process faster, I would suggest to you that you set the image to a lower resolution like 2000 pixels on the long side or less. If it's a very high resolution image, it still can work. I found you get more problems with that and also the process is a lot slower. Before we go on to the second method where I show you how to use this artistically in your AI renders, let's talk a little bit about the dangers of this because you might say, well, this isn't 100% realistic, or this could also be done with Photoshop in the past. Both of them are true. The reason why this is so problematic is because AI can do this automatically. You can have face detection to automatically mask the face and then replace the face in batch, not only for thousands of images, but also for thousands of different people. So you can create any kind of star with the face on that image. Now, of course, this is very problematic for fake news and mass manipulation. Another important element here is that this is face replacement, but you can also replace any kind of other thing, like for example, insignias or clothing or other elements in the image that create a fake story. A lot of people, especially people who are not savvy with that technique, will not know the difference. And when we don't expect manipulation, our brain is very good in making the image look real to us. So this is very problematic, but it's also a big step in image processing and technology. So it's both good and bad at the same time. One thing I want to encourage you to do is to educate your friends and family, especially the older members and people who are not tech savvy about the abilities of this technology so they are better prepared for fake news. Now let's come to a use that is more artistic and a lot more fun. We have here a render that I have created with Midjourney, and you can see that some of the details here are not as nice. So I want to replace the woman, have a better face and make this an actual stone gate over here, or at least a stone wall and remove the girl on that side. I'm using the prompt beautiful woman in a Roman toga. Select all of the women. I'm using Euler A with 40 steps. I have the resolution for the render a little bit higher at 768 for both. We are using restore face. The CFG scale is at eight. The denoise strength is at 5.5. I'm also adding the artist by Alma Tadema. Let's click on generate. Now, when we compare the before and the after, you can see that we have a lot of improvement. One thing that sometimes happens is this dark aura around the figure. I couldn't find a solution for that, but you can paint this out in Photoshop by just using the original image. Now, as a next step, we can simply grab this image and drag it over here. So this is now the new input. I will now paint in this whole part over here in the shape of a gate. Use the prompt stone gate. And because the original image has a lot of different information in here, I will put the denoise strength to 7.5. You can see that this is now the new image where we have an actual stone gate that is also in the same style as the original image. 
Again, we drag the image over here to make it the input. For the next step, I'm going to mask this part of the image with the girl. And in this case, I'm using the sampling method DDIM with 70 steps and set my denoise strength to 0.5. After we click on generate, we're getting this result. The reason why I use DDIM is because I have found that with that sampling method, the stone path stays closer to the type of stone used in the original image. I'm using the prompt stone path leading into the distance. So you have seen that in painting can be absolutely powerful, but also very worrying. Let me know in the comments what you think. Leave a like and share this video. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.